Alright guys, uh, I kind of decided, kind of after the fact, that I tried making a video on these second old three speeds. I know a lot of you guys are running them uh, occasionally fail. Uh, just want to let you know that they're not actually not that hard to rebuild. Uh, maybe this might be something you want to do. So if you do, um, hopefully this video will kind of give you an idea of what you're getting into. Uh, let me first start by saying that I'm not a professional transmission builder. Uh, by any means, I am a mechanic, and but you don't have to be a transmission builder to build one of these sagamores. So really, fairly simple. So I'm going to try to show you what to do, what to look for, um, and then I'll, when I get it back together, I'll show you how to disassemble the thing so you can at least um, kind of get a, a grip on what you're doing, uh, even if you don't want to. Uh, disassemble one and rebuild it yourself then you know maybe you learn something from it I don't know um, so I've completely disassembled the transmission uh, I'll show you some steps kind of what to do what I think you should do and uh, we'll see how it goes first thing I, I recommend you do is take the thing completely apart and clean out the case. Um, there's going to be some temptation sometimes to just quickly fix what you see and you might miss something. What usually fails on these is the input bearing. Right, this is your input shaft. Um, and they usually fail. First of all, there's a lot of stress on this bearing to start with. The part of the reason they usually fail is because people don't check the oil level enough. Now, these transmissions rely on splash to lubricate. Um, oil gets low, don't get enough um, oil to the bearings. Bearing lets go. When it, when it lets go, it usually takes out the gear on both the input shaft and on the cluster and counter shaft. That's generally what has to be replaced on this. Um, so, you see that, you swap it out. Don't be tempted to not look at the thing uh, if you just get a pull out and you think it might be good. This particular transmission, I didn't know the history on it. Um, I paid, I don't know, $30 for it. Guy gave it to me. He didn't know if it was any good or not. So, I took it, took the side cover off, really didn't see anything, but just on my experience I knew that it would be best to take it down. And sure enough, the bearing on this one was already coming apart. Uh, now, it hadn't, you know, hadn't completely shelled it, so it really didn't hurt the transmission. But if, if I'd have cleaned this up and stuck it on the track, it wouldn't be long before this transmission would have failed. So, Go against the temptation to just pull one out. Nobody wants to get in a race and not be able to finish the race. So, if you don't know the history on this thing, I recommend you tear it apart and look at it. Okay, so once I get it down, when I build one for myself, what I want to do is I want to clean this tranny up real, real good inside. And that's where you spend a lot of time. All right. This case I've gone through and completely uh, cleaned to the best of my ability. There's also a magnet down in these a lot of times that's glued in there. It's really hard to clean. Sometimes it's better to just uh, knock, knock the magnet out and leave it out. All right. The next thing I always do, obviously, is I want to go through and you want to run a thread chaser through all these holes and clean them now while you got it apart and you're not doing it. So the first step you're going to need to do, once you start to go back together with it, is put in this counter shaft. All right. Now this counter shaft has needle bearings in it. Now there's 27 on each end, and there is a special tool to load these bearings. I don't have one, um, but there's a way to get around this. What you're going to want to do with these needle bearings. 
is you're going to want to carefully stack them on the inside of the gear. Put them in with heavy grease, like wheel bearing grease. This will hold them in place long enough that you can carefully ease the counter shaft down in there, slide the counter shaft pin in without dislodging the bearings. This is probably the, the most difficult part of building the training. Um, I don't get in a hurry on this. Take your time. They won't fall out and you'll be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what it should look like when you're getting it done. Okay, when you get one side loaded, what you should have is 27 bearings. You notice they're just, I use some clean wheel bearing grease to kind of hold them in place. There's a little thin paper washer, it's not really paper, it's just paper thin washer that goes in the end of this, kind of over them to kind of keep them in place. Same thing you can use just to do is a little bit of grease to hold in place. There's probably enough already on there. Alright, so that goes in one end. Alright, so I'm counting my bearings to make sure they're all there and I've got 27 left. Uh, so it should be in good shape. So now I'm going to flip it over and start to do the other side. Alright, so go ahead and put some wheel bearing grease in here. Not going to hurt anything. Um, and load this side. Same thing, should have 27 when I'm done. Like I say, it just takes a little patience. It's not difficult. Notice if you're going to reuse some of this stuff, you need to clean everything really, really good. Alright. If you see any scoring on this shaft that these needle bearings right in, you're going to have to replace that. Otherwise, it'll just chew the bearings up. This one looks really, really good. Alright, let me continue loading these and then I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so I've got the gears loaded cluster shaft or the counter shaft, whatever you want to call it, uh, loaded with the needle bearings and I'm ready to put them back in the case. I've got the little thin washer on each side. Um, there's two thrust washers that go on either end of this clus cluster gear and they need to, notice they have some tangs on the end of them that help locate them inside the case. All right? It's important that you put this tang into the notch or into the groove that's cut in the case. Right? So the soft brass side would be towards the gear. And again, a good way to hold these in place is with just a little heavy grease. All right? So I'm going to put these in place and then we're going to snip, attempt to stab our cluster gear. So once you get this in, and this is something you need to be careful with, so you don't knock your needle bearings out. Otherwise, you got to start all over. Once you get this in, it's not too bad the rest of the way. All right. So again, I'm going to put these in the. I don't know whether you can see this. I don't really have anybody to film me, but I am putting these inside the case, and and we're going to attempt to put the cluster in. All right. And again, it doesn't take a lot. A lot of grease, just a little bit, either on the side of the back side of the thrust washer or in the case, to hold it in place. Sorry about that, guys. I misplaced one of my thrust washers. Get it out of the pack. Okay, so let me put our other thrust washer in and we'll 
we'll put this counter shaft in. I'll show you how to do it. Now again, there is a special tool that's supposed to a low tool that you're supposed to use. Uh, I hadn't had, I don't have one. I've never seen one. Uh, I believe it's like a wooden dowel. It's approximately the same size as the. Counter shaft. All right. So I've got my I got my thrust washers in place, and I'm ready to put the counter shaft gear in. Now there's a couple of ways to go about this. Um, I feel like it's usually easier if you turn the case up on its side and let gravity help you. Right. Um, it helps keep that straight because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be sliding this counter shaft in from the rear. Right. And it's got to go through the thrust washers, through the needle bearings without knocking them in place, through the other side bearings, and back through the thrust washer and in the case. All right. So the big gear goes to the front. All right. I'm going to start by just trying to get it in the case. All right. And I'm going to slide it in from the back opening where the extension housing goes. Right. Now I'm going to flip the get case on its end. Now you don't have to do this. I've done it both ways. I just feel that it's easier. Right. Now one thing you noticed, I knocked my thrust washer out of place. That happens. Obviously, you got to put it back in. That was actually the one from the top, so I'm still okay. So what you want to do, carefully slide this gear in. All right. Put my thrust washer back in. Put a little more grease on it. And we'll be ready to rock and roll. Again, make sure you keep it in the tab. The reason I like this too uh -huh. that's what I thought I had lost my thrust washer and I had to go get another one. Turns out my thrust washer was still in the case even after doing a lot of extensive cleaning. Which makes sense as to why I couldn't find it. Okay, so I'm ready to put my gear in now. Got my thrust washers in place on both sides. They look good. I can see through the hole. Alright, so I've got the uh, needle bearings in the case on the cluster gear or counter gear and I've also gone ahead and replaced the bushing inside the tail shaft. Um, maybe you have to, maybe yours is alright, but I had one, decided to go ahead and put it in. Uh, here's the old bushing um, and basically what I did was find a I had an old bushing driver that I found one that's about the same size 
and you simply drive it to the inside of the case and then take take a driver or something that will fit the outside of this and carefully start it by hand and drive it in until it's flush. Um, this will make the yoke a lot tighter in the case and it has a less of a tendency to wear out the, the seal that we're going to put in later on. Um, we don't have any leaks. There's less of a chance that the transmission is going to get low. All right. <clears throat> so I'm ready to go back together on the main shaft and I'll put this stuff away. <clears throat> I've already cleaned the main shaft uh, and inspected it well. Uh, there is some is some wear where the <clears throat> where the sliders the slider assembly slides back and forth in the shaft and I, you're probably not going to find too many that don't have some wear here. I don't really think that's going to give you an issue, especially, you know, for for us dirt tracks trackers, which we're not doing much shifting anyway. Other than that, transmission's in really, really nice shape, um, and got it real clean, so I'm ready to go back together with it. <clears throat> first thing you need to do is go ahead with the symbols. Just go ahead and put first gear down. Uh, first gear goes on this direction of the shaft, and it's cut down so that um, it stops in position. Uh, obviously you're going to want to um, lubricate this pretty well. Um, <coughs> engine assembly oil or something like that because again when, during startup uh, it's going to take a little while to get oil splashing so you don't want to put it together dry. So let me find something that I can uh, lubricate it with. Uh, I'll probably use um, some Assembly lube, engine assembly lube, it works pretty good. <coughs> okay, what I'm going to use is an engine assembly lube that is called Pro's Pre Lube, uh, like camshaft lifter camshaft and lifter lube, um, anything like that that has some properties to <clears throat> kind of stay on the metal, it's, it will work just fine. Uh, you can use it anyway too. Alright, next it's going to go on one of our synchronizer rings. Kind of loop, walk that loop around, make sure we got some on there. And then we're going to put on put on our hub assembly or slider assembly. Um, you can disassemble these and check the keys on these. If any of these keys are broke, you should replace them. There's a you can get these with in a kit, or if you don't need them, you can get them without. But um, a lot of times you'll find a key broke or the spring broke. Um, you do want to replace these if they're if they're worn. Um, this is one of the things that'll cause the <clears throat> transmission uh, slip out of gear. These hubs, as far as I know on these cars, on this transmission are the same. You can't really mix them up. If you take these apart, you do want to mark them. They're kind of a match set. Put them back together the same way. Um, what you do want to pay attention on is this tapered portion goes towards the outside ends of the, sh the main shaft from both directions. So this one's going to go this way and the two, three hub assembly is going to go with the tapered end out this way. That's the main thing you need to to pay attention to. Uh, this is it's not a press fit but it does fit tight on these teeth. A lot of times you have seen instruction if they tell you to press it off. It's not really pressed on but it is a tight fit. Um, sometimes you you can simply tap it down and it should slide on for it pretty good for you. Alright. Whoops, I popped this one apart. That's okay. That's good. I'll show you how to put them back in. 
this one didn't come completely out so it won't be that big a deal. Um, go ahead and show you what one of the keys looks like. Perhaps a little better here. All right, this is your your keys that go in your slider. You can get these separately. Uh, there's three in each slider, and. Um, also, this little retainer springs hold it in. It's flat on one end. It's got a little hole on the other. And the thing you want to do is just put this key, this um, spring in here, so that it's in a different spot on the other side where it ends. So you have the same end on both sides. Okay, so I'm putting the slider back together. Find the mark. Get it right there. dry so it's a little tight to get in but it will eventually go in have to get them real straight for them to go in. Just keeping a little pressure on it. I'm trying to push the key in. Okay, so we're going to put our slider back on and I'll try this one more time here and see what we get. I probably should just tap it from the center. Um, probably wouldn't hurt to put just a little bit of lube on these teeth too. Once you get this thing back together, I would pour a little bit of oil over everything. Even if you're not going to fill the transmission up, because you're probably not going to want to right away. Now, you do need to, uh, that's probably what I didn't do here. You do need to line these up. I probably this is probably the issue here, guys. Kind of told you guys wrong. But this the sinker only goes in the slider one direction. It only goes in one way. You got to line up the opening with the key, and it's probably why it didn't go down. Kind of had a brain fart there that happens. And hold your mouth right. Hope you guys can see this. Doing pretty much everything wrong so you can see what not to do. <laughs> okay, so it's started. Uh, now we we'll just need to tap it down. A uh, piece of pipe works really good. You got a piece of a slide over this. And I I should. Let's see. 
They'll tell you to press it. No, you don't have to press it. That one's not gonna be big enough. You know, let me go find some pipe. All right, guys. What I did, I didn't even have to use a piece of pipe. Uh, I just used a little punch. I just had to hold my mouth right and get it to slide on there real straight. And once. It once I got started, it just it dropped right down on. Now, how do you know when you got it on all the way? Uh, there is a snap ring that holds this slider on that has to fit there. So you do have a groove, and you, I don't know that you can see it, but it's right here at the top of this <coughs> slider. Um, so I need to make sure that um, that it's all the way down, and my snap ring fits. All right, so you're given a uh, set of snap rings in a kit. I mean, uh, I do not recommend using snap rings again. If you're, if you're lucky enough to get one off without spreading it, you, you might be all right, but I just never had much luck doing that. So now I've now got to find a snap ring that fits. Um, there's several different ones in here. Uh, and some are thick and some are thin. I think you can tell pretty quick if you got the right snap ring. Obviously, it's going to be a larger snap ring than this one. Gonna be one of these bigger snap rings, and if I remember correctly, yeah, there's three of this size and one of the thicker ones. All right, and I am pretty certain that this is the snap ring that goes on it. Um, is there a up and uh, right side up on the snap ring? Are snap some snap rings there are on these? They look very square cut. Um, so I don't, I don't think we have an issue there. Um, but you do need a good set of snap ring pliers. That's one thing you need to have. Uh, this is the style I use. Um, they got a little 90 degree end on them. <clears throat> if you got an old pair that you want to customize, put a little notch in them. That probably makes them easier, a little even a little easier to get the snap ring out. So I'm gonna see if I can start start the snap ring here and and get us rolling. Two thin ones, uh, two thin ones, and two thick ones. The two, uh, two thick ones are the same diameter. I'm trying to see, and make sure I got the right one in here. Make sure this is down all the way. I think it is. It's a real good idea to stack parts, guys. Um, make your life a lot easier. Of course, I don't remember to do that. Pretty sure it's the thin one. I don't think it would. This one would even fit in there.
and put a lube on this just so the snap ring will slide a little easier. Alright, that snap ring is in. You want to make sure that it that it's in all the way around. Um, you can usually tell if you're in all the way around because you can if you spread the snap ring just a little bit it'll kind of roll around in there. All right, so that completes <coughs> low gear. Uh, also, I do want to know, want you to be able to see that you need to make sure that this will go on over and lock them together because if they're not locked in, you know they're working because normally when the gear is not engaged, it just free wheels on this shaft. <coughs> and the synchronizer of this blocker ring, what it's supposed to do is slow this make a smooth engagement where this hub locks into the teeth of the gear and now we're physically in first gear. Uh, that looks good. Like I say, I apologize for not kind of giving this a trial run, but this is more like real life. Sometimes you're getting into it. But this is not too bad. Um, like I say, I've overhauled a few of these, and they're, they're not bad. All right, so we got really smooth engagement, um, and don't see a problem there. You should see a gap somewhere uh, between 30 and 60 thousandths between the teeth on the gear and the synchronizer ring, or the blocker ring. Everything looks good here. I'm ready to, ready to move our next gear. <clears throat> Alright, the next thing that's going to go down is going to be uh, reverse. Um, same thing here. I'm going to <clears throat> lubricate the shaft real good. Uh, before I put that down, um, do we have a synchronizer here? Uh, no, we do not, because <coughs> reverse on these, <coughs> these transmissions not synchronized, so you only have syn three synchronizer rings in the transmission. It's a three speed, and if it's four speed, you're going to have four. So, you'll usually see a little more wear on the gear teeth um, on reverse for that reason, simply because it's not synchronized. Okay, so I'm going to slide, excuse me, reverse gear on. Except I need to put it on the right direction. Okay, uh, next after the reverse gear comes. There's a flat washer and a way washer, and I don't remember which way to go. I'm looking at a, a exploded diagram real quick. I can't remember which one goes down first. I kind of think, kind of think that remember that the flat washer goes and then the then the way washer. What that does is take care of some thrust. So let me take a look at that real quick. I do know, like I say, it's a good idea to stack your parts. Then you don't have to worry about getting them back. But guys, these. You can find an exploded view online real easy. So it's not that big of a deal. Let me take a look real fast. Uh, 
All right, guys, so I was correct on that. The thick washer goes, thick flat washer goes down first, and then the wave washer goes down next. Um, again, they come in a kit if you buy a, a rebuild kit. Um, you, a lot of this stuff you could probably get by with reusing. Um, but um, I don't know how you guys are. It's, it's like an engine. I kind of want that thing to stay together. I don't want to have to work on it again later. <clears throat> Alright, so um, I did go ahead and double check too. I can tell by the drawings. I do have the the uh, snap rings right. The thinner snap rings go on the hubs and the thicker snap rings go on the bearings, which makes sense. I don't really think you could put the thick one in the wrong spot, so I was pretty confident that was right, but I did double check it while it was in there. <clears throat> okay, and so now the wave washer goes on. And then the next thing to go on is going to be our bearing, our rear bearing. Um, again, guys, these bearings are fairly important on these. They are subject to failure. I don't recommend uh, you reusing a bearing. Well, I'm not going to say that. I don't recommend you not putting a transmission together without at least checking the bearing. Uh, like I say, it's a common part to fail. Um, Front and rear bearings on these are, are, are different. Um, it's one of the things about the, the big Muncie, heavy duty Muncie 3 speed. The front and rear bearing are the same size. Uh, that's a very strong transmission. If you can build one of these, you can build one of them. The only real difference is on the inside where they have the needle bearings on the counter shaft, there's double row of bearings. So, which is, um, makes that transmission a whole lot tougher. And the bearings are just physically bigger. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Do I have the right bearing? It's kind of idiot proof. No. It looks like the rear bearing. I mean the front bearing. So we'll get the rear bearing here. <clears throat> and put this on. Uh, it is not a press fit. There's no, the, I say there's no front and side, rear side. There actually is because of this snap ring group. The snap ring is what's going to hold this um, extension housing onto the bearing. So it does only go one direction. Right. However, it is kind of a tight fit. I don't know that I would say it's a press fit. But you might have to tap it down a little bit. Um, again, you can you can use a piece of pipe, but if you're real careful, you can tap it down on its own. It's no big deal. Not hard. Just make sure you're 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 tapping on the in, inner race and not on the outer race. I guess I could get a better hammer. I'm just too lazy to get one out of the out of the shop. One other thing I'll tell you it's it's probably not a bad idea to. Build these by um, have a table you can drill a hole in. Sometimes standing this stuff up makes it a little easier to work with. But you can't get it on this way. It's not going to hurt anything. I def definitely recommend if you got a piece of pipe, use a piece of pipe tap it on with. You don't need a press. Okay, we got her down. Um, I can see the snap ring. The snap ring groove. And it's obviously a much wider groove, so... <clears throat> you're halfway done with the main shaft and actually this is the most difficult side it's really pretty darn easy 
Alright, so I'll go ahead and put my snap ring in. Before I do that, let me double check something. I'm sure this is right. Pretty sure that has to go to the inside. I think I'll, I think I'll double check this just to make sure. I'm sure it is, but let me check this too real quick. I guess I should pay better attention. <sighs> There's a real good, there's a real good uh, downloadable link. It has a pretty good layout on this tranny. Um, I should have done this a while ago. I'm putting it on the phone now. Like I say, guys, this is a. I'm doing this as a do-it-yourself or not a professional video. I was I edit everything, but this is more. It's more like real world. Okay, I have, uh, I do have it right. I just wanted to double check. Better safe than sorry. <clears throat> All right, and the big thrust washer, I mean, big snap ring, definitely goes on the end. Uh, I looked these over pretty good. They're square cut. I can't see that they're really bowed. So, I don't think it's going to make any difference. Alright. Ooh, let's see if that's the wrong one. Hmm. hmm. Let's be missing one here. I guess this is it. Definitely not any of these three. What am I missing here? Why am I not seeing this next thing? Here it is. Yeah. What did they do? Send me the wrong snap ring? One well, of these is bound to be new. I guess it's this one. Those are oak snap rings. Not those. It's got to be this one. Okay. It is not on there. Painting stretch of imagination. That doesn't look right. I mean, it looks like the right snap ring, but it don't look like it's going down in there. Hmm. It made a liar out of me. I guess it's in there now. I don't know, I don't like that. 
Okay, I'm going to have to take a look at something real fast. I've got another output shaft laying over here. I want to make sure this... I mean, it looks like it's the only one that fit, but... Do they short me a snap ring? It looks like a snap ring, but I think this is one I had. This is an old one I had laying here. Yeah, let me double check this. This is bothering me enough. I want to... This is not something that you want to be wrong. You want to take a chance on. Let me take a look right quick. And pause the camera just a minute. Okay, I, I've grabbed another tail shaft I had and whipped the case off of it real quick and verified this is the right snap ring. It just seemed like it uh, that doesn't look like a new snap ring. So I'm trying to decide did they short me one? Am I blind or, or what? And it looks like it's going on about the same as the other one. I'm just wasn't sure. I guess that's just think it doesn't quite look right to me, but I guess it's the right snap ring. I just thought I got to go a little better than that. Let me pull this out and look. Yeah, I guess it's going down in there okay. It just it'll be safe and sorry. Can't be too careful when it comes to something like this. You sure don't want the thing coming off. I guess it's on there pretty good now that I look at it, but just didn't kind of look, didn't really look right, but I guess it's okay. Pretty confident it is. I don't know what these snap rings fit, but these others just don't look right. Looks like they gave me the wrong snap rings. I think these are supposed to be the, the correct snap rings. Which can happen occasionally. These are definitely too big, as far as I can see. I mean, they just fall over. Which probably means the snap ring for my input shaft is not going to be right either, because these just don't look like the right size. I think they give you the kits, what I think. Um, I'm gonna, this is, so this looks like a snap ring I've already used, but it looks like it's going on there well, so. So I'll stay with it. I can't seem to get it to come up real easy, so I guess it's probably okay. Just don't want to be... Better be safe than sorry. I'm going to turn this air conditioner on. I'm about to burn it. I think that's what's happened. I think they gave me... These are three brand new snap rings. These two are brand new and they're... They look like the right thickness, but um, the wrong diameter. This kit is actually supposed to fit three and four speed both. I'm not really sure what the what the deal is here. Anyway, at any rate, I've got a snap ring on there that's the right one. And 
then a pair that is going to come off. So I think I'm in business. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Um, I didn't really show you these teeth up close. Show you what to look for. Um, these teeth are kind of shaped like an A-frame house. And what you're looking for is a pretty pointy end and you don't want to see it machined down across the top. It should look like basically like the front of an A-frame house. Fairly pointy and not a lot of wear. Uh, it's pretty pointy and you don't see a lot of significant wear. The gear's probably fine. The teeth are probably fine. If the dogs are worn real bad, then you'd probably want to replace the gear. I also want to look for chipped teeth on the gear. None of these are chipped. These are in really, really good shape. So, I'm ready to go to the other end of the transmission. Uh, I'm already in the main shaft. So, on the, on the other end of the main shaft, we're going to put um, second gear on. Second third gear on, actually. Um, third gear is really your input shaft. So, first thing we need to put down is going to be our gear set again I'm going to give it some lube, healthy bit of this pre-lube slide it on the main shaft goes up against the uh, machined area there and then on our cone where our blocking ring goes Look for any deep scoring. You kind of want to check the fit of your blocker rings. Make sure that that they are um, not sticking up way, way high, way, way low. Somewhere around, somewhere around sixty thousandths. When you just kind of set it on there, it looks good to me. Um, no, you do have a notch in here that you're going to have to line up with your synchronized hub. hub. That notch aligns with these keys right here that I was talking about earlier. Good idea to go ahead and lubricate this thing pretty well. Um, at least on initial startup until you get some until uh, you get some uh, oil flung on everything. It's a good idea to go ahead and pre-lube them. Um, I will tell you, like I say, I did not replace the keys on these, but I have on several of them. It's not uncommon to find broken keys or broken springs on these. Because right? these keys are what slows that synchronizer down. What grabs that blocker ring and allows you to split, flip the hub on. Right? You need the same thing on these hub teeth. You need to look for uncommon wear. These are kind of, hub teeth are kind of shaped similar to that, but um, I would say they're kind of shaped like a pyramid. Uh, they should be pointy on top and not, but not worn severely on the edge. I mean, I think if you look look at it pretty well, you'll be able to see if you see some significant wear. Again, these are a match set, so you really should keep them together. Um, they're worn together for one thing, but the other thing is it's probably a precision, fairly precision fit. And if you don't, I don't think it's the end of the world. I had put one together before where I had taken it apart and I really wasn't thinking that much about it. It didn't give me any problems. But you know, maybe on a, a daily driver or something, maybe it might um, affect the smoothness of the shift. But you know, I know better now so I know what all right, so as I place this synchronizer hub on here, I um, also want to put a little oil on the surface where the blocker rings right in, just like anything, any kind of metal parts you want to have some lubrication. So I'll put that on, get some lubrication going around. All right, I'm ready to put my hub on. Again, uh, the deal with the hubs, the taper or the small end faces towards the ends 
of the shaft in both directions. Right, so. Same thing here. Um, if you hold your mouth right, I think you should be able to get this thing to go on pretty easy. Maybe you have to give it just a little thug, thug tap, but I think if you hold your mouth right, it'll go on. Slid right down. If you got a burr on it, something maybe you have to tap it. And then it also noticed it also made it down where I've got the notch in the in this ring down in the keyway, and I know that because it, it will this keyway will actually butt right up against this hub. So we're in business there. So this this is second gear. Locks this hub light locks the gear the way this does since the hub is flying to the main shaft. The <coughs> when you lock the, the hub to the gear uh, dog teeth on the gear it now <coughs> drives drives the main shaft. Okay. Um, one thing left to put on here, guys. <coughs> is a snap ring and a, and a synchronizer. I got a phone call. I'm gonna make a pause right quick. My hands up too. <coughs> Let's see. Okay, I'm back, guys. Um, something I want to mention on these hubs. Uh, I think I got one laying around here somewhere in this park. Let's see. Yeah, dude. Uh, there's no keys in this one, but these little keys that I showed you, they fit inside these grooves. All right. If for some reason you pop it apart, it's not a big deal. The keys just lay in here. There's a groove cut in each end of the key, and there's a little spring that rides in here. All right. And so what you do, you put your 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 hub and the outer part of it, the slider, I don't know the exact terminology on these. Um, synchronizer hub, I think. And once you get your keys in, you put this little spring in, the spring is going to simply ride in the groove, cut in the back of each one of the keys. And then each key has a little hole drilled in it. One end of that spring's got a little 90 degree in, you can just put it in that hole. Just when you flip it over, orientate that spring in a different spot so that you don't have the, the break in the spring in the same side. Just a strength deal. Uh, no big deal on these. Uh, you'll get it back. Like I say, some, you know, on a race car or anything else, sometimes there's a time to be brutal. And sometimes there's a finesse. Some of this stuff is finesse. Just take your time. Uh, say, I don't do these very often, but I'm certainly not afraid to go in there. Right. And I might have just pushed one apart there, so this would be a good time to show you. I didn't have my snap ring. I was going to show you, check it. Didn't push it all the way apart, so what I have to do is just the yeah, idea or kind of push the, kind of push. The, I can either take it apart, or just kind of push it in on one of the keys, and goes right back together. Okay, so I'm ready to put this back on, and I'm ready to put the snap ring on. And all I have left is just a slide of sync, synchronizer. Right, so. Not a big deal. Uh, when you go to take these things apart, you know, a lot of the, your service information will tell you you need a puller and all this type of stuff. You can usually just take the shaft and tap it on the table and they'll usually fall off. Now, at least that's been my experience. Okay, this up Make sure I've got it. Alright, so I've got it in. I got room for my snap ring. These snap rings are right.
Okay, so let's put the snapper in, here, and this side is basically built. Like I say, guys, I don't. If you really, if you make you some custom, that can snap in real good. If you make you some custom, uh, if you make you some custom. Custom pliers, you might be able to pull these snap rings off and not not distort them. Uh, I just don't like to use, reuse them. You just you, know, you can buy small. You can buy these kits for these trainings in all different configurations. You can buy them where you just get the new needle bearings and snap rings. Um, you can buy seal kits. You can buy <coughs> a complete kit. This one has <coughs> snap rings. Snap rings, uh, the bearings, all the seals. Um, it does not have keys. I didn't need them. Uh, there's a kit that you can buy that gives you. Not only does it give you everything that I've told you, it also gives you new, new springs for the hubs and new keys, and will even give you a new counter shaft, the shaft that I put in the case for the cluster gear, um, if you need it. Uh, this one was fine. I did not need it at all. So. Um, we're ready to go here. The only other thing we like is that locks it together. The only other thing we like is putting on third gear synchronizer. Alright. This third gear synchronizer is only going to, uh, it's just going to ride on there. So probably what you want to do when you're putting it together is either put it on once you kind of slide this up in the case or use some grease to hold it together. Um, it's, it's pretty much totally up to you and what it does is it makes with their input shaft here. Right, so it's going to go this direction. Okay, so I'm going to Go ahead and put us some oil on both sides, and I'm going to uh, probably use a little grease to hold it on there, just to hold it the key way. If it pops off, it's not that big a deal. You can reach down in there and fix it. Like I say, I guess you could use 90 weight on this. I just feel like this kind of stuff is it's kind of a little better for wear. But you do have to kind of break this in. Okay, so now I'm going to simply put this in to where it, it mates. Notice the tub is working good. Alright. Right now, We're about ready to go back together with the training. Okay. That's your simple main chat. Um, so now we're to the point that we're ready to put the thing back in the case. The work is pretty much done. Um, so, let me wash my hands off here a little bit and I need to get a little cleaner rag and we'll go about a simple one. Alright.
All right, guys. So now I guess we're ready to put the training back together. Um, so how do we want to proceed? Well, there's a couple things you got to do. First thing you got to do is <clears throat> if it's the first thing. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and load up my input shaft. Uh, it does have roller bearings in here. There's 14 roller bearings in this. They're pretty big. They're pretty easy to load. You're going to load them the same way and use heavy grease to kind of hold them in place. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put my roller bearings in. Uh, these are much easier than the other ones just because they're bigger and there's less of them. Uh, so I like to use wheel bearing grease, trans yellow, or anything heavy. Wheel bearing works, grease works pretty good. So you're going to line these up around the inside of this shaft. I recommend on these bearings is you count them. That way you don't leave one out, especially on the small ones. Pretty easy to um, miscount. And I will tell you this, occasionally they'll give you an extra bearing. And one time I got through and I had one bearing left. And I didn't, didn't know that. So I took one apart, completely apart just to find out that that uh, they gave me an extra one. So if I'd have been counting all along, it probably would have saved me a lot of headache. It could have look crazy. Pretty serious. Right. So 14 of them. Again, if you're going to reuse bearings, you need to clean them really, really good. Um, but I don't know. If you go to trouble me, I don't know how you are. Everybody's different. But I only like to do something once. So I'd rather do it right. Uh, plus, you know, the hard parts for these things are getting kind of hard to find. When one comes apart over a bearing, you know, like I say, it usually takes out the cluster gear and the input for sure. So, uh, bearings and stuff are replaceable. Uh, I don't know that they're still making any parts for the rest of it. I mean, you can get some of them on eBay, but then the front trans pressure transmission just went up. The whole point of this, doing this yourself and doing it right, is that you save a little money. I do usually go ahead and wash all my parts just for the hell of it. I know what, my table looks dirty. It's actually not that dirty. It's really, really, it's a really, really old table. It's been broke hard. All right, when you're done, you should look Something like this. I don't know if you how I can see this. I don't know how this is going to come out. Um, and now our input shafts uh, ready to go. Now, I didn't show you all how to take this apart, but I will kind of just decide to do this kind of middle of things. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to proceed with this. Um, there is a snap ring. It fits inside the case that goes on the outside of this bearing. Uh, and what this does is when you put the extension housing on, uh, as you get the housing to the right spot and it slides up on this bearing, you'll have a little bit of room when you get here in a pair of snap ring, external snap ring pliers and spread this open. And it's, It'll let you slide the case on a little far and it snaps in place on the spare. Uh, some people put the case on after they put it together. Some people load it with uh, the extension housing uh, already, on, already on the main shaft. Uh, that's what I'm going to try to do today. Um, now I think I'm going to try it a different way. The, the reason being, if you're going to use paper gasket which they come with 
uh, it's probably that's probably just the easiest way to do it. But I really want to, um, I really want to put that extension housing on um, after I had a chance to to loop it up. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it the other way this time. I'm just going to put the the main shaft in without the extension housing, and we'll see how this goes. So. What you didn't see is I took the reverse reverse idler gear out of here. Uh, that's this piece right here. Uh, it fits in inside the case. It does have a it does have a shaft that drives through the back and a woodruff key just like the other shaft did. And what you have to do there's a bushing and a snap ring that goes on here. You have to take that. I mean an e clip. You got to take that e clip out. That will allow you to slide this gear forward so you can get in there everything in and out. If you don't do that, you won't be able to get in and out of the case. Matter of fact, here's my bush. Right, so it goes in like this, and when it's together, you can see the snap ring be sitting here, the gear will be back. But if you take that snap ring out, it'll allow you to slide this gear forward so you can put it back in the case. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of get that in there. I think, I don't know, I think I can just put it in later. I don't really think it matters. So I'm just going to, I don't have to fight the rear gear. I believe I can still slide that in. But I'm just going to go ahead and slide the main shaft into the case. And we'll see how this goes. I'm going to come in here through the back. Alright. I do have my 2-3 my synchronizer here. If it falls off, not a big deal. We'll slide it back on. Um, so it should go right in the case. And this outside bearing, outside this uh, the bearings on the input shaft will slide in. Slide in on the main shaft. Well, I'm trying to remember if it's better to. I don't think it makes any difference. But I might have to put the inch, put shaft in the case first. I can't remember if it goes or not. Uh, no, it doesn't. So I need to go ahead and put this in. All right. Just set it inside the case. Um. I'm going to pull this out, I think. Go ahead. No, I think I'm going to leave it on there. Um, so, you can, I don't know if you probably can't see the end of the shaft, but on the end of the shaft, there's a machine part here where these roller bearings ride on the main shaft, and that's what we're going to line up. Right. And then at the same time, our two, three, um, Synchronizer has to be in place. All right, so I've got it together, and I believe that we are good. All right. So what I'm going to do here is try to put the front bearing on. Kind of get it started. Get my new bearing here. And it also has a snap ring, an external snap ring that goes on the inside that kind of helps it line up. Alright, so it's sitting in the case. Um,
see what the issue is. Try this again. Let me make sure this shifts. Okay, so you want to make sure these are in the keys. Let's see if this doesn't go. Synchronizer over upside down. I'm paying attention. It's most of this. If you do just do something, you'll be able to figure out what it is real quick. Real quick. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide in, slide on my new bearing. Uh, probably should probably should give it some kind of lubrication. Uh, like I said, we'll pour some in there now. But I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this pre-lube on it. I guess you could put grease or I don't know. I'd rather put some kind of a, a wearable lubrication in it, wearing agent. And this will kind of help me line my gear set up. Now you're probably better to use gravity. Uh, I've got it sitting there and there just fine. So I can probably go ahead and put my uh, reverse idler in here. Um, kind of kept this together. Notice it has a Woodruff key here, um, spacer. So there is a thrust washer just like on the counter shaft that needs to go inside the case. Um, here it is. Again, same deal. It's got a tank. Best way to put it on is Use a little grease. Got a groove that the tank sits in. Pretty easy to see. Not even big deal at all. All right. Then I want to slide my shaft in. Slide my gear in. Go ahead and put my washer. The washer on here. And I should be able to slide this, go ahead and slide this in, but because I've already got it in the case. But I'm going to leave it loose for now. That's enough to hold it, so I'm still sliding here in the I need to. Okay, but I don't think I need to now anyway. So I do want to keep, you do want to kind of keep this together. Make sure that, you know, you don't, your needle bearings don't fall out in your input shed. Alright, so it's, it's ready for me to slide the housing on, and I think, I won't have any trouble if I go ahead and put this shaft in and just leave the, the key out. In fact, I'm going to have to do that. Alright, so there's a notch in the case down here on the down here on the bottom side. I uh, need to turn my shaft a little bit. 
grab it with something. You might have to use a pair of pliers, I don't know. If you use pliers, you want to kind of be gentle. You don't want to booger up the end of the shaft. These are hardened shafts, so it shouldn't take, take much. Yeah. I'm done. I guess I need to lubricate that shaft a little bit. I cleaned everything up so good. It's things that nothing moves around very easy. You just have to get a brass puncher. A drift to tap it out. And same thing here, uh, it's got a slot where this Woodruff key is, and I usually just put a little bit of silicone on the very end of it, that way it seals in the case. If it's a tight fitting case, it probably wouldn't leak anyway, but you know, usually these transmissions are old, and usually they've been rolled pretty hard. Alright, so, got a Woodruff key here. Go ahead and throw it in. Just put, like I say, put a little bit of silicone on the end of it. We got it pretty close, I think, to the. That slot's pretty long, so it doesn't have to be exact. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of silicone when I get it close. Yes, I should put some. Case is really dry because I cleaned it really, really good. This case fits real nice and tight. It probably wouldn't leak anyway, but silicone didn't hurt it. Make sure you get it around the shaft and you can wipe off one of the excess it squeezes out. And it will squeeze out some. Uh, I don't recommend a claw hammer. I just had one handy you know. Too lazy to get one out of the toolbox. Make sure it's flush. Lock off any excess. Alright, so everything's in the case now. So what's going to line this up is this extension housing. Alright, and I'm going to turn it on its side. Go ahead and put the new, comes with a new uh, snap ring around the outside of the bearing so the bearing won't push all the way through. Uh, I'll go ahead and put that on now before I pull around and push it all the way. Uh, Takes a pair. I don't even think you really need snap rings for the pliers for this. In fact, you don't. It's just to kind of keep it in place. So I snapped it. That way it can't go in any further. Alright. Um, really, uh, I've left this loose, but I could probably go ahead and put this E-clip in on the gear. But I need to turn this where you guys can see that. Let me get my extension housing on and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, I better go ahead and put my snap ring in too, guys. There's a new crap. Let me turn this around when you can see it. There's one more big snap ring that goes on, and it holds the bearing on the shaft. It goes right here in this groove. Uh, 
I need to go ahead and put that one in too. So I can't push it, the bearing out. Uh, and it's going to be one of these big heavy, one of the heavy snap rings. I did measure these. They're like 95 thousandths thick, these thicker ones. The other ones are noticeably thinner. Should be it right here. And, <clears throat> and what this one's going to do is keep that bearing on the shaft because it just kind of glides on there otherwise. See the snap ring is not quite the groove, but it's almost there. There's one end there, come here. It is now. Alright, so the snap ring's in, that'll keep the shaft from coming out. Okay, we're ready to put the hint extension housing on. Um, so what I want to do is turn this tranny up on its end. And this is where it's really good to have a hole in the table. Of course, I don't have one. Uh, so I'm just going to lean it up off the edge. I think I, if I'm careful, this will work. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I could go ahead and put the bearing retainer on there. That would probably help. I'm just going to stick this on here for now. Just kind of keep it in the right spot. It doesn't keep it from moving. That would probably help. Guys, I don't know how long it's taken. I'm not in a hurry at all. Hopefully you just do it with me. I don't know what kind of editing I'm gonna have to do. And I am trying to not do this fast at all. Okay, so I'm just sticking a very a bolt in here. I think this will hold things in place. Alright, so now I'm ready. We started this tension housing on. Um, you'll see this case you can see this snap ring right here that's what goes in, it actually you spread this spread this snap ring and it allows you to slip it on slip the case over in the bearing in the case and then it will come in and snap into the bearing and hold in place uh, in the meantime I'm going to um, go ahead and Put some silicone around here. Um, you can use the gasket, paper gaskets, but I've just found that silicone usually works better. And so that's what I'm going to do. Alright guys, I ran into a couple little problems. I turned the camera off so I could figure out what was going on. And I want to go through these with you. A particular kit that I had gave me a thrust washer that 
goes in that should go to where this uh, reversed gear is all right and there's actually a spot there for it but some of these evidently did not use the thrust washer because when I got I didn't take one out but sometimes some small parts don't get, get put back in one but apparently they've done it a few ways and this spacer can be a different size because I went out put the thrust washer in here and got my got my uh, gear back on there was no place to put my snap ring the e-clip it's not a snap ring it's an e-clip it goes right here it holds this this thrust bushing or this bushing in the gear in place that and it turns out that snap ring was almost it's virtually exactly the same diameter or the same thickness is what that thrust washer is. So basically it doesn't use a thrust washer. So I had to pull it back apart. Additionally, I tried this a couple of ways. Saw me guys, saw me struggling with it a little bit to get it back in. I found out, like I said, it's been a while since I did one of these. The easiest way to stab this transmission is go ahead and get your input shaft in here, but do not put the bearing on the shaft, the front bearing. You can slide it on here, but do not put it in position. This will allow you to manipulate this input shaft so that you can get your main shaft in in the case. Additionally, this obviously has to be in here. The reason you put this snap ring in is because this this allows you to slide this gear forward to get this to get this out. Uh, otherwise, if you didn't remove this e-clip here, you could not get the, the transmission main shaft gear set past the counter shaft. So, I know I didn't show you the dis disassembly, but basically, I'll show you how to put the cover on. I'm going to put the cover on that has the shift forks, but you pull this cover off. All right? You pull one e-clip out. You take out the five transmission bolts. All right? the high extension housing bolts. Pull it out, you'll be able to pull it back about that far. That's where you'll run into the snap ring. It looks like this. That goes around the bearing. All right? It's going to be in the case. So what you're going to you'll have room to get snap ring pliers in there. What you're going to need to do is spread that snap ring just a little bit so that you can slide it out of the groove of the bearing and the extension housing will pull off. All right. Once you've got the extension housing pulled off, make sure you have the e-clip out. Slide this reversed idler gear forward. This will allow you to move it forward. This will allow you to walk this main shaft and tail shaft assembly out. All right. Um, you will probably knock the bearings out of the front. No big of this input shaft. Those 14 bearings. No big deal, because you're going to be putting them back in anyway. Um, because I, I fought it a little bit, I was very careful to look to see if my bearings were in place. All right? Once I decided to leave my bearing really loose, just leave it on the front of the shaft, don't actually put it in the case, this allowed me to manipulate everything and get it back in. You want to make sure, and I don't know how well you can see this, This synchronizer goes in between the input shaft and this last two, three uh, shift hub assembly. All right, so make sure it's in place. Again, the notch. If this, if it doesn't make sense now or you can't see it, you'll be able to see it well. The notch is cut out for those keys in that slider, so make sure you have it orientated in there so it slips in right. All right, once you. Once you manipulate this in, you leave your bearing loose and you get the tail shaft stabbed to the input shaft, then you'll be able to put your bolts in, put everything in place, then come back and slide your main bearing into the case. You might have to just tap it a little bit. It's, it's not a press fit, it's just a close fit. But once you get that in, uh, your bearing in, then you need to put this heavy snap ring here. This holds the, the bearing onto the input shaft or the clutch shaft, whatever people call it, it's the input shaft to me. 
And this outer snap ring just keeps the barrier from sliding all the way in. All right, so once it's back together, then the only thing you need to do as far as reassembly is put your E-clip back in. All right, this is the E-clip. It just snaps in there. Not a big deal, but you have to take that E-clip out and slide that idler forward to get that main shaft to send out. But it really doesn't take long to, to get it out. It takes a, whole, a little bit longer to put it back together. It's really pretty easy to send. But that's the whole chick, trick, sliding that uh, bearing back forward. Sliding that uh, idler forward. Okay, let me clean up and we'll move on. All right, guys, so uh, probably the last thing you need to do is oil oil everything pretty good. At least give it a pretty decent coat of oil before you put the side cover on. We'll look at that in a little bit. Um, also want to check your engagement. Make sure you're able to get all your gears. All right, uh, it's smooth. Goes in the first gear. Everything feels good here. Goes in the reverse. Shifts over into second gear and now in third. All right. So one thing you might I might tell you uh, maybe this makes sense. The power flow if you're in second gear it actually locks this. If you pull it back this way and you're in second gear it actually locks this gear to the main shaft. And this counter shaft gears are always turning, so the power flow runs from this from this gear down to the second gear in the cluster, through the cluster, and then uh, makes to the output shaft. So um, this is what ties them together, and uh, this counter shaft is always turning. If you had like a noisy Let's say a noisy bearing that was in, or you had a noise that was <clears throat> present in every gear except third, that would give you a pretty good idea that it's on this counter shaft because you're taking the load off the counter shaft when you physically lock this input to the output shaft. All right. So instead of coming this direction and out, it comes this direction. Alright, so just one thing to keep in mind. But I don't expect to have any of those kind of issues because I've got new bearings front and rear. Uh, on dirt track, yes, I have reused the bearings if they look really good and they felt tight and didn't feel any noise, didn't see anything. But, um, man, uh, um, I sure don't like pulling stuff twice. And if I build it for somebody else, which in this case I sure don't want it back again. Um, all right, so the next thing we're going to do, uh, the speed on your hole, um, you can put the speedo gear in there and seal it up. Uh, a three-quarter freeze plug fits in there real nice, so you just knock that in. You don't have to worry about it. It looks a little cleaner. Um, so the next thing, I, I got two things left, basically, other than oiling it and putting my plug in my hole here, put my bearing retainer on in this side cover. There are some seals in this side cover. Uh, and we're going to take a look at those. Yeah. This is your shift forks. Uh, if you pull these, pull these shift forks out and pull them apart, you will see some of these some of these have, have uh, O-rings on. Some of them have O-rings and some of them have a, a drive-in seal. And I think all of you guys that have run these at the dirt track have experienced leaks a lot of time around that shifter seal. Uh, this kit does come in, uh, this shit does come <laughs> this kit does come with uh, shift shaft seals so we're going to put them on and we'll make sure they're right. Uh, also, we need to put the extension housing uh, seal at the end. Uh, let me see if I can 
find my seals. Notice I didn't use these. I could have, but I just don't like them. I'm just got to find the package. Just got to see. Here. Oh, I hate when I'm disorganized. Here we are. They were in there, I just wasn't looking hard enough. Okay, so this is the seals that came with. This goes in the bearing retainer up front. Uh, and I have several shift shaft, shaft seals here. I'm not sure if they're right or not. Again, this addresses more than one uh, kit. So far, everything it looks like it's been right, except for that one snap ring. It was definitely not the right snap ring. But I did have one, so I lucked out there. Um, all right, so let's take a look at this and see if they fit. These are O-rings, at least on this is an O-ring, and I'm trying to kind of slide it off without turning it up in case that, this is wrong. Any O-ring is better than nothing. Like I say, this transmission was actually in pretty good shape, but this, this O-ring is still soft. It might not leak. But Pick is a real handy tool, especially when your pins don't work good anymore. Okay, this is what I got to work with. Let's see, I'm not sure if these are right or not. Let me see. It might be. Looks like they're a little thicker, which maybe is a production deal. I don't know. Uh, that does look like it sort of goes on there. I think it's probably right. Uh, probably will seal better. Uh, so we're going to go with that. Uh, anytime you want an O-ring, you always want to lubricate the O-ring with something. You know, I just got these handies. I'm sure there's probably the correct, correct lubricant. Well, I don't know if it's the right seal or not. Yeah, maybe so. Let's see if it went in without pinching. If it did, it's yeah, it did. So it looks like it's the right one. And I'll, like I say again, I kind of clean this really well. I hate nasty, nasty oil or the nasty, nasty parts. You get enough on here, anyway. so. All right, that feels good. Uh, there is not one on this one. However, there is a seal in the housing. And this is the one I want to make darn sure it's right. Before I use it, and it looks like it is, and it's a lip seal. It looks like kind of like a miniature timing chain cover seal. For I wanted to make sure it looked right before I popped it out, and I think it's right. So I think I'm safe. Some of these old old cars you can't get parts for, and I don't want to make a potential problem a definite problem. But it looks like it's right. Let me see if I can figure out a way to pop this thing out. This one actually don't look bad, but you can't always go by that. But this one does look like does look like the correct seal. And I'm sure there's a little seal puller that works just perfect for this. I have no idea what it is. But I'll find some I'll find some way to get it out.
there's a special tool for everything that nobody ever had half of it. Okay. Come out pretty good. And actually, now nah, there ain't no seal on it, it's gone. Just all I was looking at was the metal clad part of it. Uh, there's a little bit of seal, sealing surface left, but there ain't much. This does fit, thank goodness, but just a little bit. Of, actually, what you really should do with this is just put a little tiny, tiny bit of silicone on it so it won't leak around the outside of it. But um, I think I could probably get it up with this. Give me a. I guess I could put a little bit on there. Don't really want to get it. There's a little rubber, a little bitty rubber seal inside it, but. I could probably take a tiny bit of silicone and go around the outside of it and it probably wouldn't hurt it. But I definitely want to do that on the tailpiece. Yeah. Okay. I need to put a cut the top off of these bit. I didn't. I think that might actually make a really nice, oops, really nice seal. I'm sure I can get away with using a little, let me get a ball feed hammer. A whole box of tools over here. Okay, so you can see it's not real noticeable that there's one there, but there actually is. Uh, so that should keep it from leaking around the case. Alright, so I think you can go back together with this thing. Um, when you assemble it there, there is actually there's some little levers here that you gotta make sure you engage the shift fork into. Now it's Probably a good idea to mark this some way so you know you go back exactly turn them synchronize the same way. I didn't do it. I don't think it's that critical, but it's just not a bad practice. And again, I'm just going to, I got some of this. I'm going to just use this right here and make sure you're down in there. And I don't think there's a left, I don't think there's an upside down or right side up or anything like that. Uh, there's no other place for a a seal here so um, it just seals around that lip seal and probably I need to be lubricate this and be a little bit careful about putting it back through so I don't mess up that lip seal there we go put it in and then kind of pull it back and make sure you're here and 
and it went in nice and smooth. Alright, so then put my shift fork in and again. Make sure you're down in there. Alright. Alright, that cover is ready to put back on. Except for I forgot to clean it on the inside, scrape the gasket off. Uh, so that's probably not something you want to watch me do. So let me uh, let me do that right quick, and we'll get back to it. All right, guys. So we're ready to put the transmission cover back on. Now, normally I would put a gasket on this, uh, but I do want the guy I'm building this for to take a look inside before I button it up. So I'm just going to stick the cover back on. Um, thing you do you want to do is shift it neutral all right make sure you can see your see your uh, synchronizers you know you're in neutral uh, there is a lineup pin it's a little bitty pin I don't know if you can see it or not it's a little hole in the transmission to help it line up uh, take your time here this make sure you get the shift forks in uh, you'll know if it doesn't want to go on the right that you don't have it. Right. It actually went on too good, which is almost scary. So I'm obviously lined up. I'm comfortable I'm lined up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and slap these back in here. Uh, I think I got some shift rods that I can stick on the end of it to make sure that everything feels good, but I'm confident that it will. Uh, the only thing that I have left to do other than seal this end up is the front bearing retainer and <clears throat> you put the extension housing uh, oil seal in the back. Right. And this is pretty much like any other uh, housing, any other transmission. And when you put that seal in, you obviously want to lubricate it. I've got a new bushing as I said on the end so I want to make sure that I run some heavy grease in there to make sure that it's got plenty of horse it's Actually, it'll be really tight, you know, when it's new. So you don't want to gouge that bush again. Um, and then check, check the. Uh, what am I trying to say here? Uh, check the shift operation with shift paddles on it. I'm pretty comfortable. It's going to shift fine. It shifted all right by hand. Just going to stick these in here for now. Here is my tail shaft seal, and it's like any other tail shaft seal. You always want to put a little bead of silicone around the outside because nothing's perfect, perfect on these here, on these old cases, and it just, it just does, it helps to make sure that uh, you don't have to. Do. I just can't stand links on the race car. I know most of you guys are the same way. I'm confident that this transmission can be put to service on the street and be just fine. It was, you know, I was pretty confident that it was a good transmission once I started tearing it down uh, because there, I mean, I could tell nobody been in all the factory gaskets were on it. There was still a factory label on it. There ain't no telling how long it's sat in this guy's yard. But, uh, it was in really good shape to have set out, set out. I really feel like it was probably pulled out of service because of the uh, because of that front bearing probably started making noise and they just pulled it out. And it's probably a good thing that they did. Like I say, you can you can use a front gasket, take the side cover off, or you can use silicone. I really like silicone. So I need to drive a three-quarter inch. I'm nearly positive it's three-quarter. I didn't go back and look it's been a while since I've done one. Three-quarter inch freeze plug in here. It's real nice. Um, that'll seal up, seal up your uh, gear where your speed armor is. There's no sense in putting that speed armor gear back on unless you're using it on the street. So that'll seal that leak up. Um, put my extension housing in, uh, seal in, and this thing's ready for the track. Oh, I wanted to point this out on the. Most of you guys probably know this. There's two different sizes. Um, Bearing retainers or nose nose pieces, nose cones, whatever the hell you want to call them. One of them, the large ones came on the truck. I believe it's five and a quarter. And the small ones came on the car. 
All right, uh, you got a couple of choices. All these aftermarket bell housings, uh, they have they have it set up for the car transmission. So you can either buy a new nose cone if you don't have one for no transmission. They're about twenty bucks for a brand new one. Or um, you can take a big one and machine it down. Now the exact diameter, if you want to have these machined down, and I've turned a bunch of them down on a brake lathe, is 4.685. It's 4 and 5 eighths inches. Alright. Um, so I recommend you, if you turn one down, you turn it down a few thousands, maybe four or five thousand smaller than that, in case whatever you're um, you're putting it on whatever you're machining off just a little off center or something. The reason being, I've seen, I've seen people try to put these on a grinder and cut them down. You don't get that thing centered. You might get it small enough to go in the sh in the <clears throat> in the housing, but you'll put this transmission in a bind and it won't last long. So either get the right one. It's pretty cheap, but you know I know how racers are. Reuse one from an old one. If you have one, or, or machine it down, but it's 4.685. Alright, so I want to make sure you know that size. That is the exact size. Uh, the drain return hole goes towards the bottom. Make sure you put that towards the bottom. I think it's idiot proof. I don't think you can put it on wrong, or otherwise I would have done it by now. Because you know, I pretty much can screw up anything. That's how you learn. Um, so, again, I'm going to leave this off. I'm not going to seal it. I'm going to just stick it on there and see if he's got another nose cone or if I need to cut this one down or he needs to cut it down. I'll probably let him cut it down. He's getting this too cheap anyway. But uh, guys, this is not a hard training. Uh, just like anything, first time you do one, you probably do everything the wrong way. Hopefully, uh, you learned something from it. Uh, if it was real hard, I wouldn't be doing it. Uh, but I do do one every once in a while and not really enough to to become really good at them. Kind of like anything, the more, more you do, the better you get at it. So I did want to re, uh, remind you that there's also, that's another reason I didn't want to put this in. There is a, a front seal in this. Uh, the lip, the lip goes towards oil. It goes inside this bearing container and seals this front brake. So make sure you put that sucker in too. It just drives in there. No big deal. Um, so, uh, hope this helps. Uh, I'm, Take a look at this and see if it's even worth watching. But, uh, thanks a lot. Alright guys, I did tell you I wanted to show you how to take one of these apart to get it disassembled before we can start working on it because I kind of went backwards. Now I've got an old one here. Uh, you're going to have seven bolts that you're going to need to take out along this side of the case, main case, to pull out the <coughs> side cover that's got your shift forks on it. All right. And second gear's missing on this one. It's been robbed out of here. Um, but I can still show you what I need need to show you. That everything's going to be the same. So to get this thing apart, once you remove that side cover, you got a couple things you need to do. Um, there's a snap ring or an e-clip that holds this reverse idler gear and I'm pointing it in position all right in order to actually get this K, uh, tail shaft housing to come out you're going to need to pull this e-clip so this gear can slide forward and allow you to cock the main shaft so you can take it out the back because that's the way you're going all right um, so I've already pulled the E-clip out. Um, I just got a couple of bolts in here, so I'll show you how it comes apart. Um, these are 7 16 coarse thread bolts. Take these case bolts out. And I just got a couple in here so I can show you.
and you'll be able to pull that housing out just a little ways. Flip the sewer on its bottom. You'll be able to pull it out a little bit, and you'll be able to. You'll be able to see that snap ring. All right. Uh, once you pull this snap ring out, you'll be able to see the ears of the snap ring. This will allow you to pull the case off of the uh, extension housing off of the main shaft. Now you can either do that or you pull it out to get get it. Your other option is um, you can leave it to get it. Right? Either one. Now when you start to come out of this case, um, you're going to be pulling this out of the input shaft, the input shaft roller bearings are probably going to fall out. No big deal yeah, because you're going to be going to the case anyway. Just be sure you get them on. All right? uh, if you slide this idler forward, this will allow you to walk past here. And it's kind of a tight fit, but you will be able to get it out. This helps a lot if you're not laying it on the table like that. All right, and it'll come out the back. All right? Now, this is missing some parts off here, but doesn't matter, still the same. And notice all my bearings fell out. That's not a problem. I don't know if you can see that, but that's not a problem because you're going to be putting them back anyway. Just make sure you get them all out. Alright? When you get ready to reassemble this thing, the trick is to leave this front bearing off of this input shaft so that you can wiggle it around. Alright? But the whole key is leaving this bearing up, but you've got this front input shaft in. We're going to slowly walk this in. We're in business now, I think. Alright. See how easily that went in there? Oh, it didn't look like it when I was trying to do it. Once you get that in, again, I would probably have this upside down. Go ahead and put you a couple bolts in it. So it would hold. So it'll hold. It's not going anywhere now. And this is a lot easier if you have a holding table. Okay, so I've got that in. I've got it mated. Uh, my idler gear slides back in. Now you can bring this bearing in. Alright. You kind of just walk your shaft up and it'll slide right in. Alright. That's the whole key. Right there. Put your E-clip back on. Put your outside snap ring or your heavy snap ring. Put the bearing on and you're, you're bolted back together. Your, your case is back together. And just remember the bearing tree. That's the whole key. Uh, one other thing that I just thought of that happened to me, and this is the only reason I know about it, um, we've always kind of tried to tell the, the gear ratio by these um, by these rings that are cutting the shaft. They did that at the factory for really easy identification, but guess what? Yeah. There's one, the, probably the most common one, Normally didn't have a ring cut on it. And I think that's the one 68 second gear. There were some aftermarket gears, replacement gears put in and out, and the replacement gear doesn't have to have those rings cut in it. And the reason I'm bringing this up because I got a transmission one time that had no lines on it. All right, so I'm thinking it's one one gear. And it turns out, after I've replaced the transmission, my car didn't have any, have any power, and I kept having some, couldn't understand what was going on. I was checking a bunch of things. And anyway, to make a long story short, I actually had a very low gear, I had a 150 gear, but I didn't know this because I was going by the the rings on the input shaft or the notches on the input shaft 
So the only really way to know for sure what you got is pop that side cover off and count the teeth. And I can find that information for you somewhere, but if it's never been into it, you can be pretty, you, you can be certain of what you got. But it's just something to keep in mind, it happened to me, and that's the only reason I know about it. Uh, it wasn't actually what I thought was a no-line transmission, it actually turned out to be a one-line transmission. So, just because it had an aftermarket replacement gear sometime, where down the way it had a new input shifting. So keep that in mind. Alright guys, uh, that's all I got.